have a fantastic evening and we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Good morning, good morning everybody. Welcome, welcome back. You are joining us here live at the Amakala Private Game Reserve in the Eastern Cape, South Africa, where we are sitting with some beautiful Cape Mountain Zebra on an early morning. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everybody. My name is Eric, your naturalist for this morning, joined by Morgan who is on camera for us. And we are going to be your eyes and ears as we try and show you as many animals as we possibly can on Amakala this morning. You know, starting with these beautiful Cape Mountain Zebra, who are a, a little bit skittish of us. Not skittish of us, they, they're paying a good amount of attention. Very interested and um, we're really happy that they haven't run away yet. As generally, Cape Mountains, they were very skittish animals and don't necessarily stick around very long around vehicles. But nonetheless, it's very nice to see them sitting there, well, standing there on the silhouette. There's about four of them. You can see the three that are standing on the silhouette and then there's another one standing in front of that bush on the left hand side. Not there are any animals here. There are also some red hartebeest in and around the area of where you guys going now. Please, no, no, don't leave us. Now, we must remember that this is a live and interactive show and your questions and comments really do help us. We love to hear them. So please, get involved. You can use our Wild Earth app where you can register to make comments and to get involved with the conversation, make some ask questions. You can also do the same on YouTube where you can get involved in the comment section there as well underneath this live feed. And then if that's not working, you can also go to Twitter where you can use our hashtag Wild Earth tag on Twitter to also get involved with the conversations. Oh, Darren, indeed. That's lovely. We are, it's a clear, clear sky, not a cloud, literally. There is no clouds to be seen. And uh, the sun hasn't quite poked its head out yet, but uh, we are waiting for that to happen, pending. And um, it's, I think it's going to be a great day today. I think it's going to be a warmish day. So joining us out here, up in Duma, we have Wendy. And uh, on Wendy is Chad and Panda. And then uh, on Rusty, we have Cedric and Paul. In our... Uh, Johannesburg, office manning the big screens, we have Jared, Tadiwa, and Kanti. Oh, look at that beautiful pink glow. We're going to sit here. We're going to send you over to the weather.
A very good morning to everybody. Thanks very much, Eric. Good luck on your lion and cheetah hunt. I'm sure it's going to be an excellent day there. And welcome to an overcast, rainy, quite a chilly Juma Private Game Reserve here in the Sabi Sands. My name is Chad Opson, and today on camera we've got Panda, and we've got a beautiful bull white rhino in front of us. We were just driving out, and Panda and I said, oh, let's just take it nice and slow this morning, see what we can find, and to our surprise, right on the road, a beautiful big white rhino bull. How magnificent is this. You can see he's extremely wet from the rain. The, it started raining last night probably around three o'clock. I woke up with a, a loud clap of thunder and lightning and five minutes later it was quite a, a massive downpour. So I'm sure this rhino yesterday afternoon settled on the road here because it's a, a little bit warmer on the road. And I think now, after the, the last couple of days, it's been extremely hot. I think this white rhino is very, very happy about the cooler weather. Hans, yes, oh boy, a rhino. That's uh, exactly what I said as soon as we came around the corner. Um, I was heading to some open areas to go see if we could find any rhinos, but we came across this one not in the area that I expected, so very, very happy. Might still be able to hear that thunder off in the distance, and apparently it's going to be 40 degrees Celsius today here, yeah, so for anybody in the USA, this is over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going from rain, we're going from rain to 40 degrees, which would be a lot, but we're happy to deal with it. But so you'll often find these rhinos, they'll spend the cooler parts of the day hungry, hungry hippo, 100%. It's, uh, a beautiful rhino roadblock on this uh, beautiful Friday morning. Couldn't have asked for a better way to start our morning and it seems like my luck here at Juma just continues. I've brought the luck with the, the sightings as well as a little bit of rain just to settle everything and cool everything off. And I was just saying that these rhinos, they often use the cooler parts of the morning to feed. I mean, the sun has just uh, come up in the last 15 minutes or so, and this rhino might have just been resting throughout the night here on the road. And now, as it does start to get light, you might find that he will start to move and go feed for the morning. Also, I mean, with it having rained last night, male rhino has been very territorial. You might find that he will go on a territorial patrol. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage, to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act.
So there you can see it's quite nice that he's turned like that. You can see that massive big hump just behind his neck. And that's obviously to carry that big head of his. And if you do see a, a if you do see a black rhino, they don't have that big hump behind their their neck. They've actually got quite a big saddle on their back. And black rhino has also been a little bit smaller compared to a white rhino. Not a huge difference, but there there is definitely a difference between a white rhino and a black rhino. But how beautiful is this to start our Friday morning? It looks like this rhino might be just giving himself a scratch, maybe on that tree there. I can just see the silver cluster leaf is shaking. He might have a small itch that he's maybe trying to get rid of. Well, a very good morning to everybody. Good morning, good morning. My name is Cedric, and beyond the camera with me on Rusty, we got the muscles and Paul and his teddy bear. Yes. All right, well, this morning, uh, this thunder and lightning and rain caught me by surprise. I could not believe it. Actually, when I woke up this morning, it was coming down with rain. And uh, it's funny, I looked at the app last night and it said, not a single cloud in the sky, nothing. And all of a sudden, yep, there you got rain, got lightning, got thunder, and uh, well, what a start. But I see it is busy clearing out now, so I'm hoping, I'm sure this afternoon is gonna be quite warm. And especially with this bit of rain that we had now this morning, with this kind of rain, and the sun's gonna come out woo, this afternoon. I think the humidity is gonna be skyrocketing. So yes, it's gonna be an interesting day, but yep. Plan for the morning, my plan for the morning. Well, well, well. I am on the southern boundary of uh, Juma at the moment. I'm coming to take a look if I can pick up on any of the tracks of something coming across, coming north. Yes, unfortunately with the rain, it has washed most of the tracks away. But the good thing is if we do see tracks now and it's on top of the rain, then you know it's from not too long ago. So that does help quite a bit. That's a, a uh, I can say advantage to the rain but other than that if there is anything else that was moving during the night time well yeah those tracks ain't gonna be showing too nicely so but that's all right I am looking forward to this morning's uh, sun well sunrise well the sun is gonna come up soon sunrise safari and uh, we can see what we can find out here in the African uh, bush the beautiful area this Picasso, yes, you know what it is today? It is Feline Friday. Friday Feline. <laughs> so yes, let's see what we can find. Maybe we can get something nice uh, around this area for everybody this morning. As well, we're gonna look at the smaller things. Maybe find some, maybe a tortoise, especially with the rain. Maybe we get a tortoise moving around. Or maybe a chameleon. You never know what we can find out here. So we always have to expect the unexpected around these areas. I am ambling very slowly towards Twin Dams. I've been to Trials Dam, nothing around there. I'm slowly going towards Twin Dams. Uh, so just a, a heads up, so I do apologize for the rain roof and all that. Um, and uh, the poles, because we had to put the rain roof up. It was raining when we went out this morning. Tino, yes, thank you. Oh, did you have a pot of coffee? Some of the. Anyway, morning, Tino. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on our sunrise safari. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. I think I'll have a pot of tea. Or... Oh, oh, let's go find some spots. <laughs> yeah, I got that one completely wrong. All right, you know, yes, let's go find some spots out here. Some nice rosettes would be fantastic for the morning. And uh, yeah, we'll see. You. So I'm going to go a little bit further to the central areas of Juma and work to the east. 
I think Chad said he might end up, oh, see, that's exactly what I was looking for. Oh, and, and uh, scat, yeah. So Tlumba must have been in that block yesterday. All right, looks like we've got, uh, well, might be Tlumba or Lunga. I'm in, both, I'm in the area where both females' leopards hang around, and it looks like heading this direction. So let's follow these female tracks. So while we do that, let's head over to Chad. Uh, Chad. Cedric, indeed, it is still a roadblock here on Juma. So you can see there's some red-billed ox pickers have just landed on this white rhino bull. They're catching a free ride this morning. The, the wind has picked up ever so slightly and this rhino, you can see those ears moving side to side. Rhino, they, they do get very nervous in the wind. So they have extremely bad eyesight. And so they use their, their sense of smell as well as their hearing. And they can't very, really see too well. So you can imagine when it is very windy, it must be quite tough for them to tell where a potential threat is coming from or where the voices are coming from. So uh, morning, Cedric, are you guys out yet? Apologies uh, about that. Other rangers are just asking if we out and about and it does seem like the rain has stopped. Maybe this wind is going to blow the clouds away and then that temperature is going to start to rise. But there is quite a nice open area where this rhino is heading. Uh, Lillian, black and white rhino tracks are similar. They, they're not the same. So a white rhino track is very square. Um, so, I mean, it, it's almost literally like a square, whereas a black rhino track is quite rounded. Um, it is quite tough to tell the difference at first between the two tracks, but once you, you do spend a little bit of time in the bush, um, you do get used to then the difference. And a white rhino track is much bigger compared to a black rhino track just because obviously they are holding a lot more weight, the white rhino, compared to the black rhino. But if we do get a good opportunity to maybe show you a rhino track, I will hop out the vehicle and do so. Obviously not right now because uh, this rhino is exactly where the track's on. Cedric was just saying that if we do find any tracks this morning, we, we know that they're going to be fresh which is always quite exciting. Anna Marie, thank you very much. I uh, am indeed uh, off to a terrific start. And it, uh, it just continues. So let's maybe just go forward a little bit and we'll see if we can maybe get another view of this rhino. There is a little bit of an open area up ahead so he might just start feeding or maybe be starting his territorial patrol. But I was going to go nice and slow, not to scare him off. Our march to freedom is irreversible.
some birds are louder, I think. I, I always seem to think that in the early morning, Crystal, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, when we've come out of out of the night, the air is not is what is the air is not as dense, you know. More travels, more sound travels, which is um, it's 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 pretty cool. I think you find that birds will be able to get a message across over more land, I suppose, and they will be able to do it in the evening. You know, obviously evening, sometimes there's a little bit of weather around, um, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of a breeze or a little bit of a wind, and that will definitely dampen the noise of birds. So I think this lovely still mornings like this, perfect for making a lot of noise. Welcome back, everybody. We've left that white rhino bull. Um, he did move into an open area, but then he started moving into quite a dense area, and we got a perfect view of him. So we decided not to follow him through the thicker bush. We'll just let him go on his morning routine. And we, we've now continued a little bit along the road, and we in the area, there were tracks of three lions yesterday, most likely Marty Breakaway Pride. And so we've just come into this area to see if we can find any tracks of them. Like I was saying before, you left us the, any tracks that we do find, we will know that they are quite fresh. So we're just taking it nice and slow, keeping a lookout left and right. So, Martin, you're wondering why the rhinos and the, the sabi sands don't have uh, collars. So, I mean, the, the sabi sands it falls within the greater Kruger National Park. So, it's within a, a 1.2 million hectare reserve, which is a huge, huge, huge um, game reserve. And you can imagine the amount of rhinos that there must be within that area to collar all the animals all the rhinos within this area there it's just it's not viable i mean the the cost to do so is huge so what they do here is the rhinos they are notched so we basically give them an id number so there's specific notches within their ears or clips within their ears that they will give them and ranges within particular areas will then see those rhinos, they will take the identification number and they will then send it into the research of this area. So just to monitor where those rhinos are moving and things like that. So, I mean, it is a great thing to collar rhinos and be able to say this rhino's moved here, this rhino's moved there, but to collar all of them it's just not viable, and the, the price is going to be a huge, huge, huge price. But we, we do do that monitoring. Let's hold on there, Panda. We do monitor them in different ways within different areas. Okay, while we continue driving around this area, Nice, uh, I'm not too sure exactly where Chad's got those uh, tracks, but uh, yeah, let's cross fingers that he finds some lions this morning. I'm still trying to search uh, here in the area for the, I've got those uh, female leopard tracks that's coming down all the way into the, into the southeastern corner here of Juma. 
and I'm just gonna quickly have a little squizzles here just to see if I can pick up on any other tracks. I think she looks like she might have gone south. I got a feeling she went south into into Little Gowrie. Um, but unfortunately, we cannot go that side. But you know, you never know. But I, but I think it was quite early on because the rain is on top of her tracks. So the tracks is not on top of the rain. So it was before the rain. I think uh, you know. And if the leopards, uh, if they want to move around, they'll move and they can move uh, a great distance. So maybe she pops out here. Oh, Patrick, yes, Shudulu and Nanny. I wanted to do the west, but uh, Chad's gone west that side, so I think he's got uh, more luck going bumping into Shudulu or Nene. I'm um, coming more to the eastern side, so more for like in Sumi, uh, Tlalamba, maybe even Langa. So I might have uh, more luck with those three uh, leopardesses. Just gonna keep my eyes open. Interesting weather. It's like I said, like quite a warm wind that's coming through. It's like hot air. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. I didn't see that. I don't know, like a rock or something that was in the road there. Uh, jet, I don't think they thrive and hunt easy in this kind of weather, you know, it's, they can thrive and hunt easy in, in any kind of weather if they need to, you know, it's just uh, all depends on uh, a few circumstances, but uh, yeah, I've seen, uh, seen them hunting in wet weather, seen them hunting in dry weather, and what do I have here? Ooh, I've got a lot of wild dog tracks up and down. Ooh, wild dogs came all the way down here. I'm going to let the guys quickly know, very fresh tracks as well. Uh, Dion, Dion. No, they're not coppering. Alright, let's actually follow these wild dog tracks. It looks like it's uh, maybe heading towards um, Chitwa, Chitwa area. Let's quickly go down here. It's on top of rain, so this is not long ago. It's going straight down this side. Let's just go and look. You never know what plays out here. Fortunately, the wild dogs, tracking wild dogs. <laughs> it's either you just bump into them, or you can track them, but you've got to think like five, six steps ahead. They all still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still going. Let the guys know. Any stations in the east copy me? No one's listening to me. All right, well, that's fine. It's still done. Impalas are looking that way. Impalas are looking that way. Stacy, yes. Very nice chasing wild dogs. Yeah. Impalas are looking that way. Uh, it wasn't long ago this. This was like, as I say, it's on top of the rain. You can see all here. Yeah. Oh, on the road, yeah, yeah let's go. Might be... Still going straight south. It's like minutes ago, minutes ago. All down here. All right, now from here is the next thing. They might have gone back to this pan again, like from yesterday afternoon, they went to this pan for a drink. I think they went straight onto Chitwa. Just let's just double check here. You see anything there, Paul? Uh, Not much, eh? Yeah, I think they've gone south. Any Chitwa stations copy me? Not 
see where they find these wild dogs. Yeah, I see some tracks going. Yeah, that's south. That's straight south. Mm. Maybe towards the dam or. I have to get hold of the Chitwa guy. Sorry, um, Jared, I have to get hold of the Chitwa guys. I can't just go to the dam or just in case they've got guests, that's there. It's, uh, it's just unfortunate we do have uh, agreements with uh, certain lodges. So I'm just going to wait to see if we can get any in answer. Uh, Dion, Dion? All right, let's head over to Eric. This is awesome. Have a look here. We've snuck up to this pale, chanting goshawk. Now these are these are really cool birds of prey. They uh, stand. Very tall, you know, they've got a very long set of pink legs, grayish bodies that blend into the clouds in the sky. And they move with extreme swiftness through the air when they are hunting. And these guys will eat anything from uh, medium sized rodents all the way up to birds. I've seen one. Uh, uh, wrestling with a very small snake, small boomslang. I mean, yo, that was a brave thing to have done because boomslang are very, very venomous. And I've seen one with a mongoose. No, sorry, that was a jackal buzzard. Now, they're juveniles. I made a mistake the other day. Okay, I mistaked a juvenile pale chanting goshawk for a common buzzard. And so it's not a rookie mistake, but um, I mean, the juveniles, they don't, they look nothing like the adults. They look, they're almost, they fully sort of brown and white with uh, these sort of kind of like brown flecks, dark brown flecks all over their neck, their chest, and then down their back. But the one thing that you will see the common buzzard that the jackal buzzard don't have is is a different coloration fade on the 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 head. What? Oh, he, he's, he's he's left us. Uh, Hunts, to my knowledge, no. These guys will stay the same color. Um, um, animals that have, uh, well, birds that have breeding plumage here would be the, uh, the long-tailed widow bird. And what else, what else? I think that's about it for Amakala's bird species. Most of our birds stay the same color when they are uh, going to mate with each other. When they're going into the breeding season. Uh, the ostrich, I mean, the ostrich does get a different color on their beaks and uh, on their, their uh, shins. In this part of the country, it's just basically just the shins and the beaks that start to get this beautiful pink color. When you look at animals like the ostriches from Kenya and in the Mara, you'll find that they completely go pink, their whole bodies, all their flesh. If I'm not mistaken, I think we are sending you up to Cedric or Chad. I'm not mistaken, but we're sending you to...
Uh, gone with the wind. So it's just the two, uh, two of the individuals from the pack of 12. Uh, we might just actually sit here, maybe they might come back here, I'm not too sure, but let's just uh, sit a little bit here and let's look to the west. Well, the radio is very... Gigi, no idea, no, no idea why they separated, but uh, maybe they're chasing after something, you know, maybe they're chasing us after some impalas, and all of a sudden some went east, some went west, so sometimes it does happen, it does happen, but then they start whooping and they'll pre pretty much... Uh, and locate one another's position very quickly. No. Mm. All right, well. well do you see something? Oh, yeah, a lot of whooping that's out here, there. Well, hyena, very far. Very, very far. All right, let's continue from Paul, let's see. All right, uh, well, it was all right. It was nice just to have them for a short pre uh, a, a period of time here at the Chitwood Dam. Nothing coming behind you, huh? Nothing. Okay. I think, well, let's just move a little bit on. I'm thinking uh, they, might go <coughs> they might go south. If they go south, I'm going to head maybe towards those big open clearings. Um, just to the west of Chitwa airstrip. That water bike is still looking intensely that side. I just want to throw you. You're getting any comms? Male water buck here, yeah? but we're just going to bypass this male water buck. Sorry, Mister. <coughs> we are just going to try and see if we can find those doggy dogs <coughs> for a well, say feline Friday, but it's not a feline, so we'll just say it's a dog Friday. Dog Friday. <laughs> doggy, 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 doggy Friday. <coughs> That's. back everybody and Cedric good luck with uh, finding those wild dogs again and myself and Panda have decided to would you like me to reposition Panda yeah. apologies I'm just gonna reposition just we've got the the roof on this morning because it was raining and is that better it was raining this morning so we decided to try and uh, Keep the rain off us but we decided to drive the northern boundary i heard cedric was driving the southern boundary so we were driving the northern boundary to see if we could find any tracks of any animals coming in from the north and we haven't found anything just yet but we've decided to come to this beautiful water hole and we have found a pod of hippos and just seem to be relaxing in the water. It's always nice to come to a water hole and just enjoy the, the sounds and the, the peacefulness of nature. Uh, Eric this morning was saying the beautiful dawn chorus. It's 
It's not the dawn chorus now, but the, the birds are still still chirping. I think they're also all excited because of the the rain that we've had through the early hours of this morning. Morning, hippo. <laughs> Always love enjoying and love to hear the, the hippos making their noises. I think that's most likely a good night. Brandon, I'm sure the sometimes you'll find hippos in waterholes that are pretty dirty. Um, but they will then often move from specific waterholes if it does get too dirty. I mean, there might be quite a lot of algae in it, but also, I mean, other animals will come down, herds of buffalo will defecate in it, elephants will go to the bathroom in it, other animals will come and wallow. And so if it is quite a small water hole and there's not too much movement of water, then you will find that hippos might move away from it. But generally speaking, I mean, hippos pick the, the best water hole suited for them. And because these animals are moving around quite a lot in the evening feeding if they come across a nice nicer water hole or cleaner then you'll find that they'll then take up uh, they'll set up camp should i say at that water hole but yeah you you are correct in saying that they are asking if they will move water holes they will indeed but this water hole here doesn't look too too dirty at all it actually looks uh, pretty clean and maybe later this afternoon this will be where we'll have to tell Cedric to take a wallow if it does get 40 degrees Celsius today which it is uh, slowly starting to look like it is going to be the clouds are starting to disappear there's quite a lot of blue sky around us and I'm sure it's going to turn into a fantastic morning here in the Sabi Sands. The Croy younger hippos are a lot more pink um, in colour than the older ones are. It's uh, often got to do with the pigments of their skin. So, I mean, if you do see a youngster, often like their, their underbelly and their underarms, and even like around their neck, can be very, very pink in color. And as they grow a little bit older, that pink starts to get a little bit darker in color. There is actually a, a youngster, but it's coming up and down quite a lot. I'll have to. I'll just keep an eye on it. It's in further to the left, but it's not showing itself for now. So I think it's fine to stay there, Panda. I love that uh, call. I don't know. It's quite tough to to hear it, but the yellow-billed hornbills are calling off in the distance. is actually the water hole that all the action happened at on my my first drive when I was with Panda and Cedric was sitting in the back with the Nkuhuma Pride and we did get information from the our neighboring property that the Nkuhuma Pride did cross into their side yesterday morning and I drove the northern boundary to see if they had come back and unfortunately they haven't or maybe they have, just last night and now the uh, the rain has washed away their tracks. This is on.
on safari. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari. We've just had a beautiful chorus from the Bok Makiri, and it sounds like they're getting closer. They're probably only about 30 meters away from us. Can't see them. It's a bit too thick here, but they are nonetheless still in the area. I'm pretty sure I can hear the fiscal flycatcher. Fiscal flycatcher, southern... Oh, somber green bull. Oh, this bird chorus is absolutely beautiful. You'll find woodpeckers will come and chip pieces of bark off the olive trees um, as they uh, look for insects to feed on. stick that's lying on the road at the moment so we were sitting here and we actually had an African hoopoe that was sitting here for a good two three minutes for us and very relaxed and as soon as we went live typical the birds understand they know when we go live and uh, thanks Jared <laughs> uh, anyway yeah all right let's uh, move on let's uh, move on no luck with the wild dogs unfortunately <laughs> the wild dogs went straight, uh, straight west into other places. It uh, looks like maybe Little Gari and maybe you know, south towards Vessel side. So, yeah, we got no more view on them. <laughs> uh, so, it was just so funny. Yeah. 
That African hoopie. And you know, African hoopie is beautiful, beautiful bird, beautiful bird. And they, they never just sit uh, like, they always fly off, you know, they never just sit still. And this one was like perfect, sitting on that branch on the road. Not minding its own business and loving life for like three, four minutes, and as soon as we go live, as soon as we go live, they just took off. Oh, a nice red crested Quran. Look at that. A very wet red crested Quran. Hello. I haven't seen one of them for a while. And now it's behind the bush. It might pop out again, if right. He looked pretty drenched and miserable when he just popped into me. Uh, come out. Mm, there he is. Beautiful bird. I love it. We had, of course, uh, they're not calling at the moment. They'll start calling. It'll give it a give and take now. I think it's about three, four months' time. They'll start hearing them doing that. And then they, they make a beautiful melody after that, clicking off their beak. Mm. All right, that one's gone. Jono, yes, uh, smaller things. Well, also some rosettes as well, I think. But yeah, some birds. I think after this little bit of rain, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe some of these termite mounds might be a little bit more active. Maybe later on, not now, but maybe a little bit more later on. Let's see some of the little flying ants coming through. Oh, Kuchava. Maybe the beautiful leopardess here. Elaine, yes. <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to think when should Lunga. Lunga should to be due very soon after mating with, uh, well, <laughs> well, she mated with Ngobot Swan and she's mated with Tortoise Pan last year. So, and twice with Tortoise Pan and twice with Ngobot Swan. Those two males, different males. So, and that was last year. So, yes, I think it should be very, very soon. I'll speak to. The guys that do Traverse Mall towards uh, Little Gauri. She hangs around Little Gauri vessels, a little bit into Hoffman's, uh, some of these properties here. So. so I'm just trying to listen to what the guys are saying here, yeah? because I'm trying to give them an update on those wild dogs as well from this morning. Oh, we're we actually funny enough talking about Lungo. Before myself, we're just talking. Can you imagine? Finding Lunga giving birth. Eh? Imagine getting that live. That'll never, well, I'm not saying it'll never happen, but I tell you, if that ever does happen, wow, 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 wow. I think then, then I've reached my ultimate dream. Ultimate sighting. So they've got the radio up here on the dashboard at the moment due to sometimes on Chitwa our comms is quite bad and for some reason if I just left it from there to here it it, uh, it increases the the range. I know it's not much but it helps. Alright, let's go down here slowly. Alright, I'm on a Chitwa new driveway as well, so maybe lucky with uh, Kuchava, that other leopardess. Maybe bump into her, or maybe her daughter in Sumi. I think in Sumi went north from the day we had her. I think she went straight into Torch uh, Torchwood. Hanging quite a bit out that side. Alright, well, we are going to continue. I think slowly head back to Juma's side. While we do that, let's head over to Eric. This is really cool. I hope you do come right with those rosettes of yours, Cedric. Uh, we're looking for something ourselves. And we're traveling through this 
what appears to be a short forest of sneezewood, um, kraal spikethorn, karoo boer bean, not karoo, but small leaf boer bean now, uh, needle bush and common quarries with the occasional blue bush in the area. Nice long grasses as well. It's a good area to find your uh, bush park and your kudus. They've seen so many kudus but they just don't want to stop. They're always moving away from us. Right. Sounds like Chad has got something interesting on the other side there. We're going to send you over to him. Thanks very much, uh, Eric. And we do have something very interesting here. A nice, uh, beautiful herd of elephants. And obviously, as soon as we go live, they decide to start heading off into some thicker bush where you could also find bushbuck and kudu in this area and we just left that water hole and we've decided to continue driving and we came across this herd of elephants that will most likely slowly start to head in the direction of that water hole but because it is so nice and cool there's been rain around so you can imagine that while these elephants are feeding they're getting a lot of moisture out of the the grasses and the trees that they're feeding on so they're not necessarily going to have to head straight to water because it's getting hot it is still very very cool it's a nice little cool breeze blowing also so i've just said to panda that it might be worth going to the water but then thinking again I don't think we're going to head straight to the water because it, it may take these elephants over an hour to get there and we'll be sitting, waiting, watching, not much. There is another elephant panda that's going to maybe come across the road just off to the right hand side. How beautiful is that? Sandy, I'm absolutely loving my Juma stint so far. I couldn't have asked for a much better start to be dead honest with you. The whole Wild Earth team here at Juma has been fantastic, very, very welcoming. And I've really enjoyed exploring this section of the Sabi Sands. So I do look forward to many more drives here on Juma. I'm glad they'll say everybody's enjoying having me around. And I can't wait to bring some more fantastic sightings to everybody watching and sitting at home. It's amazing. As quick as you find these massive mammals, they can just disappear also. And there's not too many roads around this area where we are. So I think it might be quite tough to spend time with them. Uh, Roy, that's a very interesting question. So, I mean, elephants during droughts, they will, will often ring bark trees. So if I do find a nice marula tree that's been ring barked, I will step out and show you. But they often try and get their moisture from the bigger trees, like a marula tree. Um, they will also eat the knob thorns. But a lot of the, the moisture will come from the inner cambium layer. So what they'll do is they'll break the outer bark off and then use their tusk to get into the inner cambium layer. And they'll then feed on that. And lots and lots of nutrients um, in the inner cambium layer as well as a lot of moisture in there for them. But there's no real specific plant that holds a lot more moisture compared to others. I'm going to just drive slowly forward. 
maybe see if we can get another view of these elephants. But it does seem like they've headed off into the dense area. But it was a herd of probably 12 or 13 elephants. So a very nice herd to see. There's one there, I don't know if you gonna be able to get anything there panda let's just stop like this <laughs> got to be quick on the camera to film elephants sometimes the elephants they'll stick within the same area so Jared just go again with what Hannah said I did get the name You couldn't be more correct, Hannah. Uh, silent giants. And it's actually very, very amazing how these elephants, if they want to, they can be incredibly noisy. But if they don't want to, they can move through these bushes being very, very silent. And even now, I mean, we know that there's 10 or 12 elephants in this bush not far from us. And we literally can't hear anything. But I think we might uh, leave this uh, small herd of elephants here. They are heading into quite a dense area. Maybe later on we'll come back towards the water hole where we just were. Maybe we'll get them drinking. But I think for now, let's let them be. Continue feeding. And we'll see what else we can find. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act. and it's something that we've seen more with leopard cubs than we have with lion cubs. We haven't really focused in on the, the process of their teeth and the way that they grow 
but it happens sort of around about, I'm guessing with lion cubs, around about six to eight months, maybe eight months would be more realistic, where they start to grow their permanent teeth and the, their little milk teeth pop out. And that is elephant dung. And elephant dung is fun. I'm bored with tails now. Elephant dung is the next thing. Wow. Yes, does that taste nice? Yeah, 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 yeah. Flame. Uh, well, uh, muscles and poor and myself. Uh, we just made our way back onto Juma, and uh, we're going to actually want to try and go west because <coughs> I thought uh, Chad was doing the west, but apparently he's doing the north towards Bifflesuk uh, Dam. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and do the west, just in case we get lucky with some nice, interesting uh, sightings around that side. Maybe a tortoise pan or Shudulu and Nene. I think somebody was uh, inquiring about uh, Shudulu and Nene this uh, morning. So yes, I'm going to head there and uh, see if we can follow up on on, uh, on that. But yeah, uh, we're just in the Mullah Whites at the moment, just in the drainage line. And just coming here slowly, because we've still got that female leopard tracks here that came into this area, but I think more that she went over. Oh, you're right then, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> she went more south into Little Gowrie. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's look for these animals. Mm, and it's so nice and fresh this morning. Lovely. I love the smells. Especially after a bit of rain. You get all like that wet soil, wet grass kind of smell, aroma that pushes through. Doesn't look like too much here. Dina, our camp, yes, oh, uh, oh yes, uh, Tlalamba <coughs> comes through the camp, <coughs> oh, you apologize then, eh? uh, Tlalamba comes through the camp, uh, Morwati, the male leopard comes through the camp, uh, Marips has come through, he's, he's been through the camp a few times, quite a few times, so yeah, there. Shudulu doesn't come that far east, Kara doesn't, I know Kara in the beginning, I think it was about two years ago, she was making her way close to our camp area, but uh, over the, um, I haven't seen her coming all the way down that side again. So I think she's pushed a little bit further north into Bifflesuk side. Um, but yeah, I think mainly like those three leopards, Tlalamba, Mulwati, and Marips. Uh, and Sunsumi, don't for, sorry, and Sumi, but they, they, she hasn't got a territory, just remember. And Sumi doesn't have a territory as of yet, She's still very young, give and take maybe another year before she sets up a, a little area for herself. Um, but yeah, she'll also come through that area. I'll, you know, uh, our camp will be in an area where she utilizes. All right, anyhow, let's uh, move on, move on, move on, move on. I'm just trying to think exactly plan of action from here and then I might just go and go remain <coughs> straight to Zoe's road yes yeah that's the only time we get that uh, interesting popcorn smell from the leopards when they scent marking As, uh, so especially on a rainy or like when we get a bit of rain like this this morning um, sometimes it washes a little bit of the scent away from the, the areas, from the bushes and all that, and then you'll find that uh, leopards tend to become a little bit more active on scent marking again, just to 
resent those uh, those bushes and uh, we'll spray them full of their their scent marks. So yeah, that's right. I'm just trying to see where this leopardess's tracks disappeared from this morning. So I want to double check it if it didn't go north. that one all right well we're going to continue going west I think uh, yes let's see what Chad has got around Bifflesuk Dam good luck Cedric I think it's uh, a race this morning to see who can find a leopard first because myself and Panda we also really 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 want to find a leopard and we we just take it a nice and slow driving all different roads to see if we can find any tracks I mean like we were saying a little bit earlier on that if we do find tracks now we know that they're gonna be fresh and like Cedric was saying with that uh, popcorn smell it's you might be able to pick up that scent of a leopard that's uh, recently scent marked and you can know that now that leopard is close by so after the rain also there's uh, beautiful aromas that are coming out and we waiting to see if we can smell any leopard scent marking within this area I mean male and female leopards are territorial so I mean, they'll both be recent marking their territory and might not necessarily be this morning, but definitely throughout today or maybe this evening, maybe that's when we're going to strike gold with the leopard. But you also never know. This is the African bush after all, and it can be very unpredictable. You don't know if there's going to be a leopard in the next marula tree. Is there? Oh, no. Unfortunately, not this one, but maybe a few marulas down, we might get to find a leopard up in the tree. And I say that because often lots of wind, lightning, rain, it's a very good opportunity for, for leopards to hunt. I mean, you can imagine a herd of impala when there's lightning and rain around they want to stay tight-knit group maybe try and get into a thicker area try and get away from the rain the lightning the thunder all of that and leopards are very very opportunistic i mean like all the cats out here so i mean in a tight-knit group that leopard can stalk up quite close to those impalas and then run at them and so often after a lot of rain a lot of wind a lot of lightning it's a, a good time to find leopards up in trees with carcasses so myself and panda have been uh, looking in all these beautiful trees around juma this morning to see maybe we're gonna find that elusive rosetted cat just some hyena tracks in the road there. Sorry, I'm just gonna go back a little bit. Kevin, I'll get to your question in two seconds. It's actually one wild dog that's run down the road here. But I know Cedric did have the wild dogs further in that direction, so maybe this one got a little bit lost. And Kevin, so to my knowledge, no. The sure these tracks are from now now. Yeah, it's a wild dog that's been running down this road here. Yeah. Um, so Kevin, sorry, uh, getting very distracted here, but. To my knowledge, I don't believe that the, the scent mark of a, a female leopard will change um, if she's pregnant or not. 
And so it stays the same throughout her life. So it's actually the whole pack of wild dogs that ran down this road. So maybe they were here this morning and then Cedric found their tracks a little bit further along. Or it could be another pack of wild dogs, you never know. So we'll just slowly drive down this road. Maybe we will find them. They've been all over the show, running around here. Also some hyenas that have been following these wild dogs. The hyena track's a lot bigger compared to a wild dog track. Also the hyena track, you often see the, the pad at the back, the lobes are quite slanted, whereas a wild dog track, the, the lobes are very straight. And that's uh, one of the easiest ways to tell the difference between a wild dog and a hyena track. Also the wild dogs, their toes are quite circular. Uh, Puma, I do indeed have a favorite leopard story. How long do you have? We've got about an hour and a half left of show, so I don't want to steal all the thunder, but there was a leopard sighting in Pinda. Um, it was probably 2019, and my guests were very, very keen to see leopard cubs, and we knew this particular female, the Ntabung Course female, for all your viewers that might have been watching back then you might have seen her and we watched her and she led us to a kill she hoisted this kill in the tree and then all of a sudden she left the, this kill and the tracker that i was working with josiah uh, incredible man he's been on pinda for 30 years he said to me he said chad let's stay here she's gonna go and fetch the cubs and bring them back and the guest said to me, okay, no problem. And they said, how long? And I said, it could be 20 minutes or it could be three hours. You just never know. Maybe she's going to suckle them before she then brings them. So I said to them, let's give it an hour. So we sat there chatting, 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 drank some coffee. Time went on half an hour, nothing. 45 minutes, nothing. An hour came and the guest said to me, no, Chad, it's getting hot. Let's leave. And I said, okay, but that's up to you. And the guest said, uh, the, the tracker Josiah said to me, he said, no, Chad, we're not leaving. So I said, okay, well, guys, 30 years experience is saying, let's not leave, let's wait, because this is going to be the first time these cubs are going to eat meat. And so I said, okay, cool. If you, guys, if you folks are happy, I'm going to stay. Anyway, we sat there for an hour and 45 minutes, waiting, waiting, waiting. Eventually, Josiah said, there they are. And as we looked up, as we looked up there, we could see mom and the grass was quite long. So we couldn't see the cubs and they eventually came into the road towards where the carcass was. And there were these two little fluff balls that came into the road towards us. And two out of the six guests were crying because of how cute they were. And they didn't want to spend that long waiting for the, the leopard, but after that amount of time to see those um, cubs come into a carcass for the first time, it was very, very special. So that's one of the, my favorite stories of uh, a leopard sighting. If you are a driven nature enthusiast with a background in communications, then this message is for you. Wild Earth is calling for volunteers to moderate our web and social media chat platforms during our live broadcasts. Do you keep up with the latest trends on social media? Do you have quick fingers and a sharp eye? Then we're looking for you. To apply, email your CV to us at jobs at wildearth.tv. Join the Wild Earth team today. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
another tortoise there. So this show two two leopard tortoises this, uh, this morning. Just shows you that this rain uh, out in numbers. So we have to keep our eyes peeled. We don't want to drive over them. All right, uh, Paul, let's go up Zoe's. I've got a good feeling up this road that uh, we're going to find some nice things. What do you think? Yeah. I also think so. Still nice and fresh. Can't believe it that they're saying 40 today. <laughs> But it is going to get there. It is going to get there. I think once this cloud burns up, uh, it's, it's going to climb. Temperatures will climb. My heart almost skipped a beat because I heard that Cedric found a leopard a tortoise I thought he had won this small little competition that we have going this morning but uh, still beautiful to see a little leopard tortoise crossing the road and we are still on our leopard hunt we're looking for any rosetted cat that we might be able to find this morning We are now heading towards another waterhole, not too far away from where we are. We'll just go have a look, see around there, see if we can find any tracks. And yesterday we know the hyenas stole the carcass from a female leopard, Lalamba, a little bit further in that direction. But there was no tracks of her um, around. So we're not 100% sure where she has gone and she might be still sticking around maybe maybe she got a small piece of the carcass and was able to hoist it or stash it somewhere away from those hyenas only time will tell but Cedric and I seem to be moving around Juma like this we staying far away from one another which is good because the more ground you cover the better chance of finding Uh, Crystal, unfortunately I haven't been that lucky <laughs> to see a leopard giving birth um, but I do have a story about um, somebody seeing a cheetah on Pinda giving birth and the ranger has been there for 25 years and named Sibu Nsele what a fine gentleman but he was driving guests and came around the corner to a mother cheetah lying down and he thought oh she's very very full the, she must have uh, either got a carcass somewhere around or she's finished it and moved off and next thing he said that the cheetah just gave birth to a cub literally in the open on the bank of quite a dense drainage line and he was able to witness this cheetah giving birth to a cub and what she did is then she groomed it and cleaned it lifted it up and carried it into the drainage line and that to me was crazy to hear that he saw this cheetah and when he told the story we were actually on a training drive with some new rangers and they were asking him because of his experience Sibu what's the most amazing thing you've seen and we turned this corner and he said oh yeah Actually over here is where I saw a cheetah giving birth and everybody's minds are just blown. We're like, see well you just said that so casually, like it's nothing. He's like, oh yeah, but long time ago. And so that for me was uh, pretty incredible. I've actually, Crystal, never seen... I've seen once before, just hold on there, Panda. I've seen once before... Uh, an impala there was some of the baby out the impala and unfortunately we came around the corner didn't know she was there and she got up and moved off into thicker bush and I wasn't going to try and follow her to watch her give birth we 
gave her a bit of a fright as she we came around the corner so I'd rather let her give birth in peace but I'm sure spending time in the bush once again there may there may be an opportunity to see that but for now let's head back over to Cedric and see what the update is Still coming up on Zoe, slowly heading out, just double checking everything, nothing so far, nothing so far. Jerome, no, I've never, I've, yeah, I've been like lost before, but like not seriously lost. Um, you know, the one thing about, yeah, you, you, you know kind of your cut lines, your boundary roads, so, you know, if you, are, if you are a little bit lost, you just drive until you get to one of the main roads and then you can quickly pick up on where you're going and where, or where you are. Um, so yeah, and I've never ever had to spend a night out in the bush. Look, I have spent the night when I actually did my uh, my training. It was in 2006. It was a, at Sabi Sabi. We had a thing called uh, Nkombi Camp. So Nkombi Camp is a ranger selection camp. So back in the days, uh, back in the days, that's how they had to. That's how they chose the guys to work there at Sabi Sabi. And um, you know, you either can. You either fit in or you must move off um, you know if you you know if you suit the style of work and that and I remember that for those two weeks on the Nkombi camp so we practically stayed about a week and a half in those two weeks we stayed about a week and a half in the bush you know in the uh, one or two nights in the sleeping bags in the drainage lines and then luckily we had a little campsite with little tents and all that but uh, yeah most few nights uh, slept on in the in the drainage lines there in the, the sobby sand. So it was nice, lovely. Of course, we weren't lost, which is just uh, that's the only time I really slept outside uh, in the sobby sand like that. Yeah. But yeah, now and. Uh, uh, I don't think I'll ever get lost unless you know like you know, sometimes I always kind of doubt myself when I go into the bush and I follow leopard or follow lions or something into the thickets and we go through the block you know, especially at my time you know you never know if you're turning left or right and you're thinking you're going straight but in fact you're almost doing like a little circle or a little loop so yeah. Better is more than a word to us. It's a commitment to conserve our nation's precious landscapes, oceans, and wildlife. It's more sustainable fishing and farming practices, jobs and prosperity for our communities, and access to clean drinking water for all. Better is believing that together we can make a difference. For nature and for you.
We have something a little bit different to an animal. This is now something that you find on animals. This is a paralysis tick. Now, it's in the name. It's a fairly, fairly large thing. This one is probably about a centimeter and a half. Uh, it's probably about a centimeter. Yes, it's about a centimeter uh, uh, wide or long. Is a couple, a couple few millimeters thick and wide, and he's very, very fat. You can see it. That's part of his bead. <clears throat> Let me turn him around here quickly. No, don't grab the stick. Um, we've placed him upside down because, well, he, he moves around awful, an awful lot by himself, being as big as he is. Now, they generally don't start this big. They actually start probably half the size. Now, you can't really see him probably now. Um, they start more than half the size of this. Now, let go, let go, let go. Um, and uh, obviously, latch onto an animal and start sucking on their blood. You see how he's trying to move himself? If he was on the grass, he'd be able to turn himself over no problem. So he would never die like uh, some beetles would, which would, if they get flipped onto their backs, they can't flip back over. This one will definitely be able to flip back over. And uh, I'd say he's been latched onto somebody for quite some time. With a body that big, goodness. Now, we found this on the road while we were here actually looking for our three amigos. <laughs> Patty, I'm sorry, but we have to see this. We must cause awareness. This is the reason. These little guys are the reason why I wear shorts, because this you do not want climbing up the inside of your long trousers, because you will not feel it until it latches on somewhere where they're not supposed to. And, um, yes, these guys are also the reasons for, reason for tick bite fever. It, they do, and sometimes what happens is you pull the tick off, but part of it will be left out. So this jackal is being probably a little bit more protective than looking for an eagle for its food, which is very, very interesting. This is something I've never seen before. But looking at it closely now, it looks to be a tawny eagle by the fact that the gape on the mouth doesn't extend past the eye. But me, this is... Do you apologize losing Eric there? All right, it's... Continue on. Yeah, ticks ain't pretty. Ticks ain't pretty at all. Actually, all kind of ticks. Well, look, the pepper ticks are small, so you can't even really even see them. That's the thing about a pepper tick. Hardly oh, see them. All right. Uh, just done the open clearing now, nothing this side. I'm, I thought we might get something coming down Zoe's. Zoe's is, Zoe's is very quiet, very quiet this morning and um, uh, maybe we'll go down to Trias Dam, Paul. Treehouse Dam. Looks like there's a vehicle that's uh, just popped out here in front of us. And, uh, yep, we'll try and... Oh, um, not so many at the thing at the moment. Uh, I, I think, like, how many birds were poor? About 430, I said the other day. I think 430 birds. Yeah. So it's just this guy's trying to get hold of us here. I actually wanted to chat to him, but uh, unfortunately came to us. 
So we'll just have to... Ingwe Alley. Let's do Ingwe Alley. Yeah. I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling that side. Well, we're gonna just go towards Ingwe Alley. Let's head over to Chad. <laughs> Cedric's gonna drive Ingwe Alley. And for anybody who doesn't know what an Ingwe is, it's a leopard. So, Leopard Alley. He's hoping for some luck on Leopard Alley. And Cedric might get lucky because uh, I'm actually on my way to Treehouse Dam where he'll most likely find me. It'll be nice to catch up with old Cedars, see how his morning's been going. But we are driving along quite a nice drainage line at the moment and it's a good area for Leopard. So we're quite close to where Clalamba was last seen. There's tracks of a male leopard in this area, also possibly Marips. So, Cedric and I both have the same ideas this morning. It's just a matter of time to see who finds the leopard first. We're just around the corner now from Treehouse Dam, where we're just going to stop here on the damn wall and just enjoy the beautiful this beautiful dam and enjoy the sounds and listen out for any maybe alarm calls that we might hear off in the distance I know yesterday we had some kudus alarm calling and we were with those wild dogs not far from here And it is still quite nice and cool this morning, so, I mean, we'll be moving around. Riley, I'm very glad you also have this good feeling about a leopard on the horizon. I hope it's, certainly hope it's not on the horizon because uh, unfortunately the horizon's not on Juma. <laughs> but I do get what you're saying and it would be incredible if we can find one. I've gone four drives now in Juma without a, a leopard but the leopard luck has to turn at some point and with last night's rain washing away all the tracks it can be quite difficult to know which areas to start in. And the areas that we are driving this morning is Areas that we know that these leopards like to move in. Um, often they will use same, the same game trails or the same roads in areas. So we're driving those routes to see if we can maybe find any tracks of them, which will then give us a better indication of where we're going to start our search. But it's also not necessarily only the only way you can find a leopard is by tracking it. And like I was just saying with the alarm calls. And Valma, it's very, very important to listen out while you are tracking. So often what we do is we'll track an animal and then if the tracks go off the road and we know that they are fresh, what we do is we'll just turn off the vehicle and give ourselves maybe three, four, five minutes to listen out because you've seen this bush around us. Oh, there's the happy hippo in the water. So, I mean, you've seen the bush around us and it is very thick. So if the leopard's moved off the road, we're not necessarily gonna be able to spot that leopard off the road. So we use every advantage around us in order to find that leopard and if a Nyala or Impala sees that leopard 
they're going to alarm call and it then gives us a much better indication of where that leopard is and i mean a lot of the times like monkeys if there's a troop of vervet monkeys in trees they'll often stare at that leopard so if you can hear monkeys you often look in the tall trees around and they'll then be looking at that leopard and you then often know okay i need to drive to the left hand side of that beautiful big knob thorn tree and start looking around there and if they are able to they'll often follow that leopard on top of the the canopy just in order to let all the other animals in the area know that there is a threat around so we we take advantage of other animals giving away positions of predators it's also very important to know different alarm calls so I mean, for instance, the kudu or nyala and parlors, all very different, their alarm calls. And if you hear an alarm call from a nyala, you know, okay, that's an nyala alarm calling. I need to now keep a lookout for the nyalas. Because when you then find that herd of nyalas, you know, okay, that leopard was now close by here. Yeah. Even small little birds will give away positions of snakes, maybe even uh, maybe even a snake, uh, big raptors and things like that. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
How beautiful is that just to keep quiet and enjoy nature at its finest. There's been quite a lot of red-billed ox pickers that have been flying around this waterhole and I haven't seen any game around here, any impalas or wildebeest or buffalo, but it might be worth just having a slow drive around here and seeing what those ox, red billed ox pickers might be landing on. They could also just be coming down to the water for their drink, but we will have to see what is around the next few corners here around Treehouse Dam. Well, this is nice, got an African Harrier walk. This is beautiful. It was actually going all along all these little dead branches, looking for something to feed on. Maybe a squirrel, maybe baby chicks. Oh, yeah, it's going to go back there. So you're going to say, look in all the little crevices. See if you can find maybe a little hole. Maybe a woodpecker or barbets, starlings. They might have a nest somewhere in this a dead tree. And that's what exactly what this African hairy hawk does. It looks all around. Quite a it's quite a hunter. It's amazing how they go from one dead tree to the next tree, dead tree and so on. Even the weaver nests. Hmm. The birds do not like them at all. And you can understand why. One of the biggest enemies to the bird chicks. I love the <coughs> excuse me, the old name, the gymnogene. <coughs> Sorry. <What? laughs> Sorry, Paul. There's funny things in my throat. But I love the old name, gymnogene. Oh, there it goes. Where's it gonna go? And Paul might come. Maybe to this one dead tree in front of us. Nah. Alright, let's see. That's the um Precious, that's correct. It's the only bird that's the double jointed. That's very correct, Precious. I just want to see where did it, where did it go now. Did it go this side? Oh, did it actually flew further there, yeah. Uh, maybe uh, far. That's right, Precious. So what they do, they can actually bend their leg this way down. So if they climb and they can actually bend their legs in to like into a hole or to a crevice and then take out whatever is <coughs> inside that hole. Excuse me. All right. That was nice. Nice to have a African Harrier Hawk for the morning. Lovely. Oh, they got a... A tortoise, another one on the ground. Sorry, it might be just crossing quickly there. Oh, man. That's a hingeback tortoise now. You can see much flatter compared to the tortoise that we had a little bit earlier. Very round, very high. The leopard tortoise. Well, this is a hingeback tortoise. And there it goes. Three tortoises for the morning. Two leopard tortoises and a hingeback tortoise. That's nice. This shows you, a little bit of rain changes things up here. And I think the insects this afternoon, the sun comes out and starts baking. Mm. I think we're going to have so many interesting little insects. Oh, there's a red-backed shrike. There's a lovely red-backed shrike. I'm going to see if we can get it. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Oh, it's gone now, sorry. <laughs> it's gone. I didn't see those ones behind me. Oh, it flew off. You're right there. <laughs> sorry, I do apologize. Oh, it's a little bit of birding this morning. Always good to do birding. Love. The bird species around here. There's so many, and you always just listen out and look out for what you can find. 
Hannah, yes, most of the time they do travel by themselves, the tortoises, Hannah. But uh, you'll find if it's a male and a female, if it's a male that's chasing a female and wants to copulate with her, and then you'll find two of them together. Of course. As I say, it takes two to tango. A tortoise tango. We're coming slowly, we just passed one of the pans here called Chilla Pan. Uh, and I'm just coming past here, I just want to double check on one or two things here. In the, in the Mawati here. Let me see if something's happening in the drainage line. So I don't see any hyena tracks this morning. Oh, well, hyena tracks are very few and far there. But then again, it's also, it was raining, so it's washed most of the tracks away from the night. I don't see anything really fresh. Alright, well we're going to get to the Molawati drainage line, the Molawati. Let's head over to Chad. Good luck Cedric, I'm checking around Chelapan. Uh, we've just left Treehouse Dam now. I thought I was going to be able to bump into Cedric at some point, but it seems like he's changed his plan and is not coming down to Treehouse Dam. But we're still bumbling around this morning trying to see if we are able to find any sign of leopard early hours of this morning. It's also very interesting. I've I've seen quite a lot of hyena tracks, but on the, the outskirts of the, the property. I mean, I drove the northern boundary and the eastern boundary today to see if there was anything coming in. And there was quite a lot of hyena activity around there, but nothing in the central parts of Juma where we are right now. And yesterday we are coming up to the area where we saw those three hyenas in the the mud wallow with that impala car. Oh, I don't. Uh, sorry, there was a woodlands kingfisher, but it as I stopped, it flew off. Yeah, we are coming up to the area where we saw the three hyenas with the impala carcass yesterday. So maybe we'll find some more signs of hyenas around this area. But this road we currently driving now is quite a nice road to to drive to cut the western part of Juma almost in half see if there's any tracks of anything crossing that way or crossing that way and give us a better indication of where to start our search and it doesn't look like anybody has driven here this morning which is great it's always nice after the rain to be able to tell where somebody's driven and it's not too often that I'll drive the same road twice just to try and maximize the area that we that we are searching but we're gonna continue on our little bumble let's head over to Eric who's got a very tall animal Why? Always. They always tend to do this when they walk away from you as soon as... Thank you. Hello. Good morning. We have found some a giraffe. Fairly... Well, youngish female. I'd say she's probably about four, four or five years old. She's not necessarily the tallest female. She's very curious. She's, we've, we have her full attention as well. <laughs> She's very curious. It's possible. She may feel like we've invaded her personal space. That was not the intention. We didn't see that you were crouched behind this bush here. 
We just drove past the bush and all of a sudden, here you are. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, she's beautiful. Now, this is a typical, a typical stare from a giraffe. You know, they will sit, they'll stand there and watch you for hours. Dreamcatcher, to my knowledge, I believe the giraffe are born with dark tongues. And these tongues are already equipped for them to be able to uh, uh, attack uh, the sweet thorns and any other bush that has thorns on it with ease. Um, as, uh, yeah, you can't have your tongue being pricked by thorns and bleeding all over the place. It should be a, a health risk. Now, their tongues are prehensile, which means that they are able to wrap around things and grab things, almost the same way an elephant trunk would. It's a very strange comparison, but it works. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty much the same. And they will, most of the time, you'll actually see them just nipping bits of uh, uh, leaves, leaves of uh, trees and shrubs but their tongues do have the ability to grab, hold, and pull. <laughs> sure. I love the mouth of a zebra. I love, not a zebra, a giraffe. They are very soft looking at the top. They fuzzy. Funny shaped nostrils, but beautiful long eyelashes. She's not alone here, there. As you can see, there is another one. Gary, funny enough, yes, they do. You know, you'll find on a very, very windy day that uh, they will go and stand by bushes like this, that's almost as tall as she is. Um, sometimes uh, this is enough because majority of her body is going to be covered, really, and protected from the wind. Oh, she's very, very curious. Okay, let's go back to eating. We're not a thread. No, she's gonna walk away. Not having it. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
Definitely moving away from us. Now she's comfortable. She's at that distance where there's a fair amount of uh, space in between us and her, and uh, she can get back to f feeding, still giving us a, a bit of a look every now and then. And the eye, the ears are facing us. Oh, it always looks funny when you watch watching giraffe moving, but you can't see their bodies, you just see their necks. <laughs> it's always hilarious, this floating object. What are you seeing down there, girl? Do you see the three amigos? Because they are missing in action. Well, not quite missing in action. We just haven't found them this morning. They were seen last night. We were hoping that we were maybe going to be able to get lucky. Thanks very much, uh, Eric. I'm glad you've found a beautiful big female giraffe there on Amakala, and it is starting to get extremely hot here on Juma. The clouds have burnt off and the sun is shining. But I've just stopped here just to have a look at this beautiful marula tree, and if you look here, you can see quite a lot of mud um, up and down this tree. I mean, it's pretty much almost as tall as I am, just over over six foot and this is a rubbing post so this is an area where animals will often come after they've had a mud wallow and what they will do is they'll cake themselves in mud wait for that mud to dry and then come up to a marula tree just like this one and what they'll do is they'll rub up against this tree in order to get rid of those ticks that might be on their skin that those red billed ox pickers haven't taken off and that's most likely from rhinos and buffalo um, if it was an elephant it would be much much higher up there and I can only imagine animals from the dam that we are just at after a wallow would come to this tree in order to rub up against it and it's not just after they've wallowed they'll also use this rubbing post to get rid of any scratches or itches I should say that they they can't get to so it would be quite incredible to see an animal up a, against a rubbing post like this Africa boasts myriad landscapes From true forest to true desert. And countless stunning ecosystems in between. The savannas of East Africa are home to nature's most stunning spectacle, the Great Migration. These rolling grasslands are nurseries of abundant life. The woodlands of southern Africa, sometimes verdant and sometimes desiccated, offer the most intimate insight into the lives of the continent's beloved wildlife. Wherever you are in Africa, the scenic majesty will take your breath away. Iconic African mammals live large in humanity's imagination. Across the continent, fascinating mammals have evolved to fill every conceivable niche. Apologies for that, we seem to have lost you there for a second, but I was saying that this is most likely left behind by a rhino or a buffalo. If it was an elephant, it would be much, much higher. And I can only imagine the bark of this marula tree, it's, 
it's quite rough so to get into all those nooks and crannies that the, the animals might have an itch in it might be a great spot for a rhino or a buffalo to come and wallow and I was saying that it's also getting extremely hot now so it might be time that I take this big rain jacket off and get back into the short sleeve because it's going to be a scorcher today here on Juma. Yellow duck, you're wondering if there's any birds that use ticks as their host. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not a hundred percent sure um, that they'll use their. I mean, like red-billed oxpeckers will will use ticks, but uh, I don't think there's any birds that will host off a, a tick. If I'm honest with you, but uh, I do think we are going to continue now. Let's just uh, drive. Oh, apologies, I got the, the question wrong there. Um, there. There's no ticks that will host off a bird that I am aware of out here. Um, not to, to my knowledge, but I will do maybe a little bit of research and just find out. But uh, I'm not... I'm pretty certain that there are no birds that do do that. I think I'm going to climb back into the car now and we are just going to continue along this road and see what else we can find. Maybe next opportunity I get I'll be removing this thick jacket so have that nice cool breeze blowing onto our skin. It's quite incredible how an hour and a half ago there was lightning and thunder and rain and now it's pretty much a clear sky as you can see. I mean not really any clouds that are around. So I now do believe the weather that it is going to be 40 degrees Celsius today. Okay, we're going to continue driving along this road. Why don't we send you to Cedric, who's got some elephants at a waterhole. Alright, so I just came to one of the dams and got a nice male elephant here at this dam. But unfortunately, he's just uh, hiding behind one of the bushes now. All by himself. No other elephants in the vicinity, just uh, this lonely bull. You'll find sometimes these lonely bulls will travel solo. Unless you'll get sometimes the younger ones that will join the older boys to gain some experience. But yeah, no, this male is by himself. What boar do you think he's going to come out for us? Or is he too shy? Maybe. He might be a little bit shy. Friday, Friday shy day. Shy day. Friday is shy day. <laughs> oh boy, you can see flapping his ears around there, keeping nice and cool. I'm hoping that he's going to come down for a drink. Well, that's if he hasn't had a drink yet. I think he might have had a drink and now he's just feeding, but we'll see. We'll just wait around here. Yeah? Of course, nice hippopotamus in the water, the elephant. Perfect. Just sitting here at this dam. Yes, yes, Hillary. I was also hoping he's not going to be too shy and he's going to get into the water for us. For sure, Hillary. I fully agree. He mustn't be this shy. We must jump into the water and have a swim. There's going to be a hot day, so I think he knows it himself. Poor, I think we might all have to go all the way around, eh? We might have to go back that side. Yeah. 
Or unless we just hang back a bit. We can just sit back a little bit and we'll just see see what plays out here. It's amazing that all the elephants, you can imagine in the last uh, two months, we had so much elephant activity on Juma. It was, it was crazy. It was actually so much fun having so many elephants around and uh, due to all the marula trees that were fruiting and then all of a sudden, like practically at once, they all just disappeared. Not all of them, but uh, most of them. And now we are left with like one or two little herds that's still roaming around here. And of course, we still got uh, this male that's still roaming around. So I thought I heard the watla, watla, watla here behind me. Maybe another elephant or something, but I think it's just the wind that's blowing the dry leaves. Sounds like something is moving through the bush. No, 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 Erica, I don't think he cares about the hippos. Eh? Elephants don't really care about the hippos. They go and swim. Even if there's hippos, they'll go and swim in the water. It's like they... They feel feathers for that. Um, yeah, I think he's just eating, eating. You can see the bushes moving there, so he is just having a good old breakfast. Enough in his body. So I think he might have come down for a drink, and then sometimes they'll come down for a drink, have their little drink, and then they'll pretty much move into the bushes and start feeding once again. And the hippos respect elephants just because of the size. The hippos won't try and, how can I say, go for the elephant or try and chase the elephant off. Won't be a good idea. <laughs> it's just like the tree's got ears. And it's uh, sad. So we were here yesterday. We saw the Egyptian geese, the uh, mom and the dad. And they used to have the little the remains. And then none. It just shows you Egyptian geese uh, survival rate for those uh, youngsters is very, very low. I mean, we lost most of them there at Gauri Dam, lost all of them here at uh, Biffelzook Dam. So, yeah, survival rate for Egyptian geese, not great at all. And Paul, let's go around. Let's go around. We've got a refreshing splash of entertainment this March. Africam is surfacing with a new show. Join us every morning and submerge yourself in nature's ambiance. Watch it live and transport yourself to the finest watering holes across Africa. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
morning. Good morning to you too, you pose. Yes, good old grunt there. I think he's taking a bit of a snooze there, Paul. He's not even moving, he's not even eating now. There with his trunk, maybe trying to. All right, maybe he's gonna eat again. So we have come across some earland. Only two of them here uh, look to be females, uh, if not young males. Fairly, fairly relaxed. I mean, the one did sort of try and trot away from us a little bit, but uh, didn't go very far. It's always nice. It's always nice to have relaxed animals. Makes it easier to talk about them. Um, yeah, I can confirm two females definitely, and uh, not uncommon to find uh, two females alone. A possibly, maybe straggling behind their herd, or maybe ahead of their herd. Or maybe they don't have the herd. That's also possible. Now that one is a bit bigger than the first one that we saw. But this is also the one that moved away first. Cheerio, uh, very similar but different pictures. Um, sure, a bush buck bark and a kudu bark, uh, fairly the same. And then you get like a very big, big kudu bull. Um, if he barked, him and an Ireland bull could almost sound the same. You see, they're not, it, it all comes down to like the tone. The tone and the pitch, you know, some are more deeper, some are kind of, you know, deeper than others or lower than others. And then there's some that are very high pitched, like you get the uh, uh, black wildebeest. That is not a manly call at all. It's a very high pitched nyap, nyap. Whereas uh, earlant is this big bow, sound like a, um, what does it sound like? A big dog. It sounds like a Great Dane almost barking. Um, but, uh, yes, that's exactly what it sounds like. It sounds like a Great Dane barking, but half of the bark. So it's just more of a... <coughs> and that's it. But deep and loud. And uh, if you were unaware of what it was, quite scary, actually, if you... If they're standing quite close to you and it's dark. Had that a couple of times in tented camps where the Ireland have walked into the camp and uh, we walk from one place to another and startle them. They all start barking. Everybody's running, including yourself, because nobody knows what's going on. <laughs> Just like Juma, it is also starting to warm up quite substantially here. We also better start taking all of our layers, otherwise we are going to pass out here due to overheating.
No, you'll find, uh, I wouldn't say all mammals, but definitely antelope. You know, those antelope mothers want to eliminate as much as possible when it comes to uh, uh, any scent or any smell of uh, animals that should, uh, they don't really want to attract. So, uh, yes, they will eat the placenta and uh, that will then obviously eliminate that smell because jackals, crows, lions, leopards, you know, they all smell that, that smell of blood, and that is something that will attract them, uh, especially also the smell of, of newborn babies. Especially, oh, for jackals, oh, my goodness. Jackals can't get enough of it. We're going to continue moving and uh, looking for our three amigos. We're not going to give up yet. And in the meantime, we're going to send you over to Chad, who's on the move. Well, Eric, good luck on that uh, cheetah search. Oh, there's still water falling off the roof onto me. But we haven't given up just yet on our leopard search. We are still bumbling around here on Juma, seeing if we can find any fresh signs of any leopard that might be active. But uh, it is starting to get extremely hot and myself and Panda are already starting to wonder what Lotus has on offer for breakfast this morning. It's been an incredible morning so far. Nice to start off with that uh, white rhino bull in the early start of the show it's also it's it's quite nice just to be driving around and learning about the smaller things i know cedric's had quite a lot of tortoises i actually just passed the tortoise about 10 minutes ago and to just stop and chat about some trees and things like that it's it's not always about the big and hairy and scaries out here in the african bush it's also learning about the different birds and the plants and grasses and things like that. But when the big and hairies and scaries are around, it's fantastic to see them. But I think if we don't have any luck this morning with leopard, this afternoon we may just continue that search but maybe only later on into the, the sunset drive. The first hour or even two is gonna be extremely hot. Excuse me, so we might be waterhole hopping once again. But we are coming up to quite a nice big open clearing. Um, Benji, I would say no. Um, if you're talking about me specifically, I would say no, because when you are guiding, you you have to, sorry, I'm just deciding where to go. <laughs> um, when you are guiding, you have to know all aspects of the bush. So if you specialize in just say big five, you've only got that small little bit of knowledge. Um, Whereas if you broaden your horizon and you get to know trees and plants and grasses and birds and insects and reptiles and the list just keeps going on, you've got a much broader knowledge of everything and you can share then that knowledge with the people that you are with. I would say maybe later on, maybe 10 years down the line, you can have a speciality. So I know some people's speciality is birding or frogging or insects um, for me personally when I was working at Pinda I did a um, an ambient course that was called a grade 2 walk which is approaching potentially dangerous animals on foot so what that entailed was with your guests <clears throat> driving along finding say for instance that white rhino bull and assessing the situation seeing if it's going to be safe enough for me to drive 500, 600 meters away, park the vehicle, 
get out with the guests, give them a briefing, and then slowly approach that rhino and view that rhino without the rhino ever knowing that you were there and then get back to the vehicle safely. And so, I mean, that's a, a speciality. That's a, a special walking qualification that you might get. But when you do start out guiding, it's, it's a, a broad thing. You, you need to know all about every little aspect of the bush. So we're just driving here through a nice big open clearing, seeing if there is anything interesting that might be around. But I think now that it is starting to heat up, the animals might start to find a little bit of shade. Alright, so apparently there's line tracks coming down from Bifelzok towards uh, Juma. It says somewhere here to Mvubu Road, this area, in this, this, this area. So I'm just going to see if they haven't crossed south, maybe for the Nkuhumas. I think they went into Bifelzok yesterday and they came around again. So I'm just going to double check here. If not, then they might still be in the north. They might still be, maybe at Tamboti Dam is right here. Sometimes they'll hang around there for the day and then come down south again. Let's see. Maybe we get a last minute lie on.
<lacht> Kelly. <lacht> Uh, tortoise, 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 tortoise pan. Yeah, Kelly, I uh, would be very happy for that. I would be very happy for that. But uh, that's all right. Uh, I'm looking for other things as well. So I'm going to always just uh, be focused on one thing. We all try and get other interesting little things around here. Birds. A nice elephant that we had a little bit early. Unfortunately, male elephant was not uh, playing games. So we left there. All right, doesn't look like anything from here. So this is exactly Tamboti Dam is here. And the line tracks are coming down. But now I think it's crossing over here. Jackie, for sure, last minute line would be fantastic. It would be wonderful. One the full. But I don't see any tracks coming over this side. This is a, I would have thought they might have come down on this road, yeah. Nutting, 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 nutting. We'll go a little bit further up. We'll cut there, it's gotta go shortcut. So let's see, we've got. Last minute, yep, it has to be a last minute oneness. You couldn't have come at a better time. We've got a mother cheetah, she's running into this herd of topi, wildebeest and zebra. And who knows, maybe she's spotted a youngster that she thinks she can single out. It seems like she may have. Look at these shots. Fascinating. Well done, Manu. Who are you going after? What have you found? It's a young Topi. She's got it. Can you believe it? Here come the adults coming back from the right. They've stopped, let's stay on her, because maybe even these zebra will have a go at her. Can you believe it? All right, we apologize for that. Uh, you lost the tumor there. Something wrong with the signal. But we are nonetheless here, and uh, we're kind of scanning the last few areas that we can possibly scan here for our three amigos before we have to put an end to our search party. We did drive past another guide and he suspected that they were sitting in a bush somewhere because he saw crows sitting on a tree, but he didn't see the crows go, going down. And that's quite possible that they could well have been on a kill. Um, and uh, obviously, you don't, as a crow, you don't just go down and land on the the carcass that a predator has just put down because um, uh, uh, it's possible that the predators may have a go at you. So, rather dirt. Anyway. Nonetheless, well, please. These uh, three amigos, they travel around all over the place. And I feel like they, they're actually starting to really get the, a full understanding of this area, which we call Amma West, which is where, where they've made majority their home. Now, they, funnily enough, do a lot, of, a lot of moving around at nighttime, which is something that cheetah don't normally do. But it's not something that's impossible for cheetahs to do. So they've been doing a lot of moving around in the night time. Uh, I'm not too sure how much hunting, if hunting, they, if they're doing hunting at night time. Oh my goodness, here's a rather interesting. Uh, Nathan, yes, those 
open fields are better for well it depends really uh, if there's more shrubs if there's lots of little shrubs in between then very very nice because then the cats can use the shrubs to hide themselves but if there's just straight open plain and no shrubs it's a little bit difficult if there's not long grass that was nearly a hole um, because obviously getting close to the getting close to the animal is going to be very difficult um, and the plains game animals they they know that they're being hunted you know they know that they, they, they have to keep their heads up they've got to look around all the time because it's not safe you know there's predators here and in this long grass you know they blend in perfectly well they can sneak up on you just like that busy driving past the dried out well a dam that i've never seen water in ever in all the time and i first started coming to amakala when i was oh when it was 2015. i've never seen water in here ever now clay the grass does go brown very very quickly uh, especially when it's very, very dry. You know, the sun at the moment and the, the summer sun that we get is, whoo, is hot. And uh, it <laughs> just about does a number to the grass. Um, it doesn't take long. You know, if, if it rains and all of this turns green, it'll probably take about a week, a week and a half of just sunlight. No, I take a week of sunlight and then it'll be brown. side doesn't it his eyes look very very exhausted oh my goodness ox pack he's almost the size of that in Viola's head be gentle just slow still learning here we go getting another spot that the impala can't often reach right near where the horns is just starting to push out oh that's beautiful oh it's a little one it's a juvenile 
Jasmine is also joining the party, waiting for somebody to feed it. Yes, flap his feathers. Oh, shame. <laughs> I can't get rid of them. <laughs> Look at them like they're having an argument. No, you leave me alone. I said, don't go there. Shame, little one. You might have to buck and rear to be able to get those birds off. Holding on nice and tight to your flappy fur. There she goes. She's... She's... She's hoisted. This... You... Oh, oh, careful. Oh, she made it. She made it. She's just going to make sure that thing doesn't slip. Oh, my girl, you go. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. You're doing so well. Come on, girl, you're doing so well. There she goes again. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. She's holding on. Oh. <laughs> like a cat, she made it on all fours. <laughs> a very, very good morning and welcome to a special broadcast. I have got this big lion trying to approach a group of hyenas who are feeding at the moment. I am Sydney Fumurani Mikosi. I am live from the western side of the Greater Kruger National Park, Sabi Sand. Look at that lion, it's trying to come now. It's running very fast to come and disperse the hyenas at the moment. Look at that. The lion is now, the lion is, is the lion is trying to fight. He's biting the hyena at the moment. This is so sad. Look at that. The, the lion is catching the hyena. This is so sad. That hyena is badly injured. Look at that. Now the lion is coming back to uh, the, the kill which was eaten by All right, so you lost us for a little bit there. Apologies there. We did go into an area where clearly there is no signal. Now, going back to that caracal, caracal caracals don't normally uh, go after uh, bush pigs. Well, that's a, it's not, not normal. But apparently this caracal was an abnormal size. Not normal. Very big. So that means warthogs can also fall prey to caracals because well, warthogs are smaller than bush pig. Um, uh, lions, leopards, cheetahs going after them. They they gotta watch their back. Gotta watch their backs always. But uh, it is possible, um, you know. What is in this book? Right. Puzzle bush is one of the shrubs that you find all the reserve, and uh, it is one that they make their nests inside there. It's 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 very hard. Any animal that's bigger than hmm, bigger than a, a no birds um, they like these nests because it's 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 a very hardy bush and it's very difficult to try and uh, get into it as a bird of prey or as a predator in any way um it's a very tight, tight kind of bush. And they're all over the place here, but the Xerxes. Oh, I enjoy listening to that comment. That was very nice. I'm glad that you enjoy it. Um, even though there can sometimes be a lot of rambling. I know I ramble an awful lot. <laughs> I, try, I try and put a stop to it. But, um, oh. Now we sort of making our way west, not west, east, sorry, making our way east. Um, we are now on the main reserve. We left that area where our three amigos were. 
We are now coming also to the end of our sunset safari. Sunrise, sunrise safari. I don't know why sunset. Jake, it has, it has been a lovely. I mean, we've had some excitement up in Duma. I mean, I've been excited down here. I don't know if we've been able to show the excitement, but it's been a fairly interesting morning drive. I mean, Morgan and I went and explored uh, an area to which I know I hadn't been into. It's probably the one area of this reserve that I hadn't uh, gone through. And uh, yeah, it was a, a bit of a, a, an, an experience trying to find those three amigos in that area, but. You know, this is such as life you don't always come right. And this is why we do this. This is a wild area, of course, so these animals have the ability to disappear if they want to disappear into bushes. And there's no problem with that. Anneli, we thank you. We thank you for tuning in. And we thank everybody that's tuned in this morning for our sunrise safari. We greatly appreciate your support here. And uh, we hope that you continue to follow us and to stay tuned with all sorts of information. There's line tracks on this road here. Yeah. Mm. There will be a sunset safari this afternoon, starting at uh, half past three, and at three o'clock on safari, and as well as the dam cams. That is the schedule for this afternoon, today and this afternoon. We hope to see you in the afternoon. Oh, it's very warm. Very, very warm. I think we're also going to be hiding underneath shade and in bushes in between drives. <laughs> 